Welcome to this short executive knowledge lecture on topic one, paper nine of the SFC licensing exams. Now, this topic covers overview of the derivatives markets, and it is just that. It's an overview. It's introducing a lot of the concepts that we'll go into in a lot more detail in later topics. Having said that, you are uh, you could see around about two to three questions from topic one. So it, it, it's worth paying attention to, but the majority of the questions come from the later topics. I will emphasize the important points to help you understand the core material you need to know to sit the exam. And a copy of the study notes that you see on the screen can be downloaded from the Executive Knowledge website uh, under resources. I strongly recommend that you supplement this learning with question practice. Now, the notes you see in the screen do not include practice questions. Hundreds of practice questions can be found uh, on examinator.online, the address for which you can see at the bottom of each page. Now, what is in Topic one, we're going to look at the fundamentals of the derivatives markets. We'll look at the four basic types of derivatives. We'll consider the different uses of derivative products. And we'll finish by looking at three types of participants in the derivatives markets. So top of page 1.2, what are derivatives? Well, a derivative, as it says, the first bullet point there, derives its value from an underlying asset. And the common underlying assets that we'll be looking at are equity, interest rate products, foreign currency products, and as we'll see in topic five, commodities. Now, there are four basic types of derivatives that we're going to consider uh, in section two, futures, forwards, swaps, and options. And there are two distinct types of markets, exchange traded markets, uh, that is the stock exchange and the futures exchange, and over-the-counter markets uh, where you are dealing with a counterparty. You come to an agreement, uh, and it can be done by phone, by email or in person, but you're not going through a central market. Now, there are three features of exchange traded markets. That is novation, centralized marketplace, and standardized contract specifications. I'll just say a short bit on novation. Novation is the process when you are clearing and settling underlying trades. Instead of the two parties clearing and settling with each other, uh, they deal through a central clearing counterparty, which is the clearing house. So the clearing house will buy from the seller and sell to the buyer, thereby guaranteeing settlement. And that process is known as novation. Centralized marketplace is just that. Uh, that uh, all the trading takes place in one location. And with exchange traded derivatives, the products are standardized, whereas, as we'll see, over-the-counter products are tailor-made. Well, we'll do just that. We'll look at over-the-counter derivatives on page 1.3. Uh, and they tend to dominate the derivatives markets, much higher volumes uh, than the exchange traded market. And as I say, the the agreements are tailor-made, customized for the requirements of the counterparties. Now, to give you an idea, um, globally, uh, over-the-counter derivatives by market risk category at June 2020 are listed in that table. And you can see by far and away, uh, the largest percentage of this market are interest rate over-the-counter derivatives. Now, a little further down the page, we make a contrast between exchange trade derivatives and OTC derivatives, really summarizing what I've said. Um, be aware of that, that, that. These are easy points for an examiner to test. Then right at the bottom of page 1.3, we've got the concept of central counterparty for over-the-counter derivative products. And this is something that has been increasingly introduced around the world to avoid the problems uh, of systemic risk that arose in 2008 with the collapse of Lehman Brothers. And we'll come to that later. 
Now, what about the derivatives market in Hong Kong and how does it operate? Page 1.4, you will see at the top of the diagram, we have the listed company, Hong Kong Exchange and Clearing Limited. That is the recognized exchange controller and it owns the stock exchange and the futures exchange, which in turn have their trading platforms, Orion trading platform for the stock exchange and HCATS, that is the Hong Kong Futures Automated Trading System for the futures exchange. And then we have the three clearing houses at the bottom and the two clearing and settlement systems, CCAS Central Clearing and Settlement System and DCAS, the Derivatives Clearing and Settlement System. Now, the way this operates with regard to paper nine, futures, will be traded on the futures exchange, the trades are matched on HCATs, and then they're passed on to DCAS for clearing and settlement. And the central clearing counterparty through the process of innovation is the futures clearinghouse bottom right HKFE clearing corporation limited. Now with traded options, traded options are traded on the stock exchange but they use HCATs to match the buys and sells. Once you have a matched buy and sell for a traded options trade, that is then passed on to DCAS for clearing and settlement. The central clearing counterparty this time is the options clearing house. If an option is to be exercised, and we'll talk about that later, the exercise instruction goes into DCAS, which then generates the underlying trade in CCAS. Three bullet points at the bottom of page 1.4 cover OTC clear over the, the counter uh, clearing uh, system, uh, and that is with with regard to the mandatory clearing that has been introduced for over-the-counter derivatives, and we will be covering that later. Okay, uh, top of page 1.5 recognizes uh, that we have an actively traded derivatives war derivative warrants market in Hong Kong. Uh, we also have the issue of derivative warrants providing a critical mass of expertise in the market. And we have callable bull bear contracts, uh, a type of structured product that we will be considering later in the material. We outline uh, some well-known overseas derivative markets and just give details of what they trade. We have the Chicago Mercantile Exchange, which deals with Euro dollar futures and currencies. The Intercontinental Exchange, which deals in Brent crude oil futures. The Osaka Exchange, that is Nikkei 225 futures. London Metal Exchange, copper futures. The Chicago Board of Trade for corn futures. And then there are various markets for equity index futures, S&P 500 index, Russell 2000 NASDAQ index, and the DJ Euro stock X50 index. Now, do I need to know all this detail for the exam? I would suggest you're generally aware of it and it will become, uh, it will make more sense when you study the other topics. Uh, but I would say it's by way of background. I've yet to see a specific question testing you on overseas derivative markets. Now, the different types of markets, we have futures uh, and those are traded standardized products traded on the futures exchange. We have forwards, which are over-the-counter products where you uh, agree a price, uh, agree time in the future for the trade, uh, and very much tailor-made products as opposed to the standardized futures. Swaps is an agreement where uh, two parties agree to exchange income streams derived from a portfolio of assets or liabilities. Now, the, the main ones are interest rate swaps, and currency swaps. Please remember that with interest rate swaps, the loan principles are not swapped and the interest is netted off before payment is made. Whereas with currency swaps, the principles are swapped, physically swapped, because they're in different currencies. 
and gross interest payments in the different currencies are exchanged. Now, the distinction between interest rate swaps and currency swaps is very easy to examine. There's a diagram there uh, illustrating an interest rate swap where company A can borrow uh, at a fixed interest rate and company B can borrow at a floating interest rate. But what they want to do is flip that around so that they're borrowing at a floating rate for company A and a fixed rate for company B. And the questions, uh, practice questions will show you how those operate. Um, are swaps examined? Yes, they are. They're quite heavily examined. And we deal with interest rate swaps uh, in a lot more detail in later topics. Uh, this is by way of introduction. And then we consider options. Now, options are a right to buy or sell the underlying asset. Um, if I buy an option, I'm paying a premium. If, I um, if I'm selling an option, I receive the premium. And I often tell candidates it's like insurance policies. For an insurance policy, you pay the premium. You have no risk. If something happens, uh, then you claim on the policy. The seller of an option or the seller of an insurance policy has the risk. They receive the premium, but they're exposed if the uh, insurance claim comes through or if the option is exercised. Please remember that the option holders have the right to do something, whereas the sellers of options have an obligation. Call option is to do with buying an underlying asset. A put option is to do with selling an underlying asset. There are two styles of options, American style, bottom of page 1.8. American style option can be exercised up to and including the expiry date, whereas European style options can only be exercised on the expiry date. Uses of uh, derivative products, we can hedge we can switch or allocate assets, or we'll just out and out make a profit. Now, for hedging, we show you there the different situations uh, that you may want to hedge, hedging a current market position, hedging a future transaction. We list the positions and we show you the price risk. I would suggest this is common sense. Now, if you're hedging a current market position under 311, you want to sell equity futures. So just remember this process. If you're hedging a current market position, you sell equity futures, whereas if you're hedging a future transaction, you buy equity futures. I'll let you work through the tables uh, and the steps, but this is very much by way of introduction, because you're going to go through these steps in later topics with specific derivative products. Asset switching is where a portfolio manager wants to reweight portfolios without actually buying and selling the assets, and they can do so through the use of derivatives. And then out and out making a profit uh, three trading strategies, directional trading, that occurs when there's an expectation of a, a future move in price and you trade to take advantage of it, assuming it occurs. Uh, spread trading, that's where you take a long and a short position, that is you buy and you sell a derivative at the same time. And arbitrage trading is where you will uh, make a, a risk-free profit because there's a miss pricing in the market between the cash product, equity, uh, and derivative prices, options, or futures. So you will buy one and you will sell the other. Always remember, you buy low, you sell high. And the last section under topic one, the different participants in the derivatives market, a very good chance you'll get a question from this page. Hedgers. Well, Hedgers are wanting to minimize any potential loss from exposure to market prices. So you're locking into a price, whether it's through futures, forwards, options, and we'll be looking at all these different mechanisms uh, later. Speculators, on the other hand, they will take the risk. They're out to make money. Uh, they do add liquidity, depth to the market. Uh, they're not hedging. Uh, that they're more high risk. And we have some hedge funds that specialize in speculating with regard to future price movements. And use of derivatives avoids the need to outlay the, the 
the capital required to buy uh, the underlying assets. You, you, you pay a fraction either, you pay margin with futures or you pay the premium with options. So that's an advantage, lower investment costs. And then thirdly, arbitrageurs, as I said, arbitrage making of a risk-free profit by exploit, exploiting price differences of securities in the market. Uh, and we've given you an arbitrage example there, if you just uh, uh, work through it and, and, and appreciate the concept that is being put forward there. But the, the question in the exam under topic one for the different participants really is just testing you to see if you uh, are appreciate the difference between these or among these three participants in derivatives markets.